Hello, and welcome to How to Create a Video Lecture Using PowerPoint. My name is Christian Tenzar, and I am Coordinator of Academic Computing at Berkshire Community College. Let's get started. Here are our goals for today. We are going to discuss how to record narrations and timings, how to save our presentations as a video, and how to share that video on YouTube and Moodle. If you are in our live workshop, please feel free to work however you are most comfortable. Now first, a little bit about the different versions of PowerPoint that are out in the wild. Some of those versions can look very different from each other. At BCC, we use online versions of PowerPoint, and the latest versions of PC and Mac are Office 2016 and Office 2019. Before you get started recording, it can be very helpful to write a script and practice it. While it's very easy to re-record in PowerPoint, you don't want to get bogged down with what to say. It's also important to keep presentations brief. Five minutes or less is a good benchmark as there's a great deal of research that shows that longer videos are not watched in their entirety. If you need to, you can split your content up into pieces to make it easier for your students. If you need assistance in splitting up your material, just reach out to Academic Technology. Also, before we get started recording, it's important to check your sound settings. While most computers have a built-in microphone, connected external microphones will give the best results. You may also need to adjust the recording volume on your computer. In this example, for a Windows PC, you can choose the input device, click the link to adjust the levels, and also see a live volume meter to quickly see if your mic is working at all. Here's how to get to the microphone settings on both a Windows PC and a Mac. Now that we have our microphone level set, we can start recording. Click record slide to begin your recording. If you click the bottom portion of the record slideshow button, you will see that there are additional options below. You can start your recording either from the beginning of the presentation or the slide currently selected. Once you click the record button with either option, PowerPoint will ask you about settings. The top box records the length of time spent on each slide, in addition to the transitions and animations. The bottom box records your voice itself and any markups you might use, but those are optional. Of course, click Start Recording once you're ready. Your recording will begin and your presentation will start, either from the beginning or from the current slide, depending on what was selected. In the upper left corner, you will see this recording window. Let's go over the buttons. The first button is used to advance the slide, but you can also left-click if you prefer. This button is used to pause if you need to take a second. This area here shows how many hours, minutes, and seconds have been spent on the current slide, in this case 7 seconds. This button will clear what you have recorded on the current slide and allow you to start that slide again. Perfect for if you make a mistake, which we all do. This number here represents the length of the entire presentation to this point. And finally, this familiar X will stop the recording at any time. If you need to go back and clear out your recordings, just click the Record Slideshow button again and select what you want to get rid of. If you review your presentation and realize one slide needs to be fixed, select that slide, then click Record Slideshow and choose Start Recording for Current Slide. Keep in mind that this erases the previous recordings on this slide and records over it. When you are ready to stop recording that slide, instead of advancing, click the X to stop recording. So why would you go through all this trouble? Why save a video instead of a PowerPoint file? Narrated PowerPoints can have very large files. A video often will make it easier for students. Also for a video, the student doesn't need to have PowerPoint installed on their computer. Saving as a video also allows you to show your presentation exactly how you want, leaving less room for interpretation from the viewer. You can then share that video on YouTube, which we'll go over later. Here are the steps for saving as a video. The next slide will demonstrate visually. First, click the File menu in the upper left area of the screen. Next, choose Export, then Create a Video. Verify that the settings are correct, then click create video. Your computer will ask you to name the file and you can place it wherever you want on your computer. Just remember where you put it. 
Here are those steps again shown differently. After clicking the file menu, choose export, then create video. Check that the settings are correct, then click the create video button. Remember to give the file a name. After saving, many people ask, okay, where's my video? It can take some time to save your video depending on how long your presentation is. Look down at the bottom of the screen to see the progress for saving the file. And also, you can click the little X if you want to cancel. Now, why would you want to put this video on YouTube? The first reason is one of the very same reasons as for making a video in the first place, file size. Since YouTube streams files instead of downloading them, they start playing immediately when the student clicks on it with no waiting. YouTube can also put captions on your video automatically, which is a great feature for making your course accessible. Sometimes YouTube needs some help to get these captions to work, so if you need assistance, get in touch with Academic Technology. And the last benefit for saving on YouTube is that you get to set the security on your video. You have complete control over whether that post is public or unlisted. To upload to YouTube, you need to have a Google account first, then go to YouTube and log into your account. Click the Add Video button and choose Upload Video. The Add Video button is usually near the top of the screen, close to the search box. Next, you will see the upload screen. Click the big upload arrow and YouTube will ask you to choose your file. Do you remember where you saved that video to before? And below is where you set the visibility on your video. You can go back and change this at any time. Once uploaded, your video can take a long time before it's ready. This is YouTube scanning and processing your video, getting it ready to play. Captions can take longer, sometimes overnight on really long videos. If you need help with YouTube captions, remember to reach out to Academic Technology. After your video is ready, YouTube will display the URL to share. Copy this URL using right-click copy or keyboard shortcuts, whichever you prefer. And finally, log into your Moodle class and post the copied link from before as a URL resource. As always, make sure you give your content a descriptive title to help your students. For YouTube videos, I recommend putting YouTube right in the title so students know where clicking the link will take them. Thank you for hanging in for the entire presentation. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out. This has been Christian Tenzar for Berkshire Community College, and it has been a pleasure to share this knowledge with you. Have a fantastic day.